Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, the other day on the Amp Hour, I mentioned these uh, little prototype PCBs I got from a company called IT Studios, ITEAD Studio.com, and how I thought they were real great value for money and almost game changing. I was raving on about them. A 32mm uh, by 32mm PCB, double sided, uh, solder mask both sides, silk screen both sides, plated through holes, uh, 6 6 uh, thou design rules, nice boards, and I got 10 of them for 16 Australian dollars delivered. You gotta be kidding me! I thought this was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Awesome! And, but, and I and I tweeted that, oh, you know, they're, they're pretty darn good value. A few little minor alignment issues with them, but not a big deal. Man, thought I'd struck gold with these things. And I posted a photo, and well, Turns out I was a bit off the mark because I had uh, only given these a cursory glance before I started raving on about them. So I went and built one up today, sold it on the components, powered it up, and it didn't work. And well, you know, Murphy's right, happens every time, circuit never works first go, great, I get to do some troubleshooting, so let's go for it. And well, no, I went through all the problems and it turned out to be a problem with the PCB manufacturer. Let's take a look at it. So let's go through the problem, shall we? I've got a little block diagram of the system that I was trying to get working. This is the PCB, this is my new little prototype circuit. Doesn't matter what it does, totally irrelevant, okay? But it's got a little uh, AVR um, 80 mega micro on it, okay? And it's got a uh, RS uh, 232 uh, type UART type uh, interface which goes to one of these little um, external FTDI um, just you know I've got one of these spark fun um, serial UART interface boards right really quite neat hooked up to the USB to the PC and it's supposed to talk through to the AVR and uh, I was able to program okay I, ha I was able to program my AVR okay using the onboard um, in circuit serial programming header not a problem okay so everything was looking quite sweet and i was quite happy with it but it just wouldn't talk to the pc and oh you know i was scratching my head thinking oh i've screwed something up maybe i've swapped the rx and the tx classic uh design mistake which i still make these days i still goof it up but yeah uh, murphy gets me every time but i double checked triple checked it wasn't that and I started to look at you know the usual problems are oh, shorts on the board you know components in backwards you know incorrect components whatever I went through all that not a problem at all so I'd gone through pretty much everything I could without actually getting the scope out and actually probing around so that's what I did I went and got my scope it was just a little uh, standard bench scope down here and I hooked it up to a ground here. The board's got like another little pin interface on the side of it, like that. So I hooked it, that was rather convenient. So I hooked the uh, the uh, oscilloscope probe, the ground uh, point up to the ground there, and I started probing around, but I didn't have to uh, probe around very long because the thing just magically started to work. And then I went, doll! Oh, I know what that is instantly. I knew it, I've seen it dozens of times before it's a classic ground path problem because once you hook an oscilloscope well there can be two things that happen when you uh, hook up an oscilloscope and your circuit suddenly magically works either a it's a ground problem because you hooked up the ground lead on there and you've got some ground system thing happening or it's uh, actually uh, loading either capacitive or resistive uh, loading but yeah, usually capacitive loading on the point that you're actually measuring but I knew it wasn't the latter it wasn't the loading of any point that I was actually measuring it was the ground problem and that's just a classic error that I've seen time and time again and I knew instantly that the ground pin between the FTDI uh, uh, UART interface here and this one over here was broken Oh, and by the way, this board, this uh, FTDI board, was actually supplying 
the plus 5 volts for this board under test because the board didn't, you know, it doesn't consume much at all. So I was able to power it from the 5 volt uh, interface directly on there. And one of the things I did when I was troubleshooting this thing before I hooked up the oscilloscope, of course, I measured that I was getting 5 volts there and I was and I measured it directly on the pins and it was no problem at all. But I didn't think to actually probe any other point. So I knew this was one of those classic system ground problems because I didn't even have to uh, probe the circuit at all. All I had to do was hook up the ground on there and all of a sudden it started working. It talked, no problems at all. I was talking to my AVR from the PC, excellent, not a problem. Take the ground, the oscilloscope ground clip off this pin here, take it off and it stops working. It just dies. So I knew I didn't have connectivity on the board between this ground point coming in here and this one over here because an oscilloscope is actually grounded like that. A bench oscilloscope, okay, is unless you've got one of those uh, fancy isolated ones, uh, you know, Tektronics and many other ones or you're using an isolated probe, the BNC connector on your, the BNC input connector on your oscilloscope is actually connected through to mains um, earth, that's that's a ground symbol. I should probably do the uh, earth symbol like that. And because I had it hooked up to a PC, as in a desktop PC, they also are mains earth and the USB connector and the other connectors on there, the shell of that and the ground and the circuit ground inside the PC is connected to mains uh, earth as well. So instantly you've got that connection going back through your power point, through to your power board, and coming back in if you've got them on different circuits, it might actually go all the way, you know, if you've got a house here, draw a little chin, you know, it's not a very good house, but anyway, it can go all the way through your house, but it will eventually join back down to your uh, common earth point down here, but they will actually connect up like that, and that provided the uh, ground path needed to complete the circuit and that's why it instantly started to work the signal integrity is going to be complete and utter crap because it's got to go all the way through your power board and back out it's going to be awful but because this isn't you know UART interface isn't particularly high speed it was able to work no problems at all so I was asking myself how could this be because I know I did a DRC a design rule check on this board before I sent it out and there were no breaks in the ground at all. So I knew I hadn't goofed up my PCB layout. I knew I didn't even have to go back and check that because, you know, DRC, it, you know, you rely on it and it works, okay? So I knew they were connected. So I thought, there must be a PCB manufacturing issue. And I thought, okay, one of the vias is, you know, is got a problem and it didn't connect through. Okay, it happens. Now, it's one interesting thing to note here is that I was using a desktop PC, which is, uh, they're all mains earth reference. But if I was using my notebook, notebook uh, PC, then it wouldn't have shown up instantly when I connected the ground probe over here because notebooks aren't mains earth reference. They're powered from isolated plug packs. And if you're powering them from batteries uh, as well, then it's going to be absolutely completely isolated, no doubt about it. So it wouldn't have shown up like that eureka moment. As soon as I connect up the uh, ground point, I wouldn't have seen. I would have had to start probing around more and, you know, it just would have led to some weird effects that uh, weren't instantly recognisable when I hooked, when I actually completed the ground here with this circular uh, system ground loop. So just something to watch out for. It's always a trap with young players. Don't ever forget to check your grounds. I decided to put the board under the microscope and here's what I found. So here's a microscope photo of the actual IT board that I got delivered down the bottom here and on the top is exactly the same part of the board in the original Gerber file that I actually sent uh, to them to manufacture the board. Now normally they would uh, take that Gerber file and they wouldn't alter it at all. Assuming unless there's something wrong with it, they wouldn't touch it. They would just use that to manufacture the board. Now um, just some basics about uh, Gerbers like this. You'll notice that there's no holes up here in inside the actual pad like that. Now 
that's uh, that's common. You will not find holes in the Gerber files themselves because they're specified in a separate NC drill file. That's why this uh, via over here like this um, is not, you know, you can't actually see it up there. Uh, it's not that it wasn't in the Gerber file. It's just that it's specified uh, in the NC drill file instead. Now, uh, now the real problem here, okay, as you can see, there is uh, copper in, in my Gerber file, there's copper going between these pads. This is what's called a flood fill. I've, I, it's, it's actually connected to ground, and I've flood filled all of my board with this uh, grounded copper, and it snakes its way through all these pads and up through the vias and all over the board, okay? And that helps um, actually get the ground connectivity on the board because um, now this ground point down here, okay, this one down here is actually the one that I hooked at my hooked my oscilloscope probe up to and that I mentioned, okay? And as you can see, it does go through, it is plated through and goes through to the other side. Same with this one next to it. But uh, because this board's particularly uh, dense on the other side, it's a very densely routed, there wasn't room to actually connect that ground through to somewhere else. So I've actually got to rely on the fact that um, I'm using the flood fill. It's got to go around here like this, it's got to go up, it's got to go through here, and up through this little narrow part here, around here, and through this uh, via here onto the other side, and then to the rest of my circuit. Now, um, so I'm pretty much reliant upon this part actually going through here, and this part going through here. Now, um, I've this the amount of copper going between these pads is actually quite large. It's actually um eight thou, which is quite quite a wide amount of copper. Now the um uh, because that's what eight thou is what was left over after I used the IT Studio uh, design rules, which were six six, which means that um, I can do a six thou trace and a six thou space. Now this trace down here is actually six thou wide, as you can see, and they've produced it. They haven't touched it at all, and the clearance around the pads here is also six thou. So I met their design rules, so they shouldn't have to touch this uh, copper. At all, they shouldn't have to alter the Gerber files in any way. They should just actually produce the mask and and produce the board, and that's it. But somebody at IT has decided, no, we're going to take um, all of the ground plane and we're going to expand it. We're going to expand the uh, you know this the spacing around between the um, pad or the via and the ground plane isn't enough. We're going to expand it even further. And look down the bottom here. Look at this. You can see this, and th there's actually a break in the copper there, and it's left what's called uh, dead copper. So that this is here is an example of dead copper. Okay, it goes through like this, and it's just floating. Now, um, it's not connected to any other part of the circuit. That's why they call it dead copper. Now, y you know, that's not usually a big deal unless you're talking really critical um, circuit design. Uh, but in this case, I was reliant upon my ground going from my ground pin all the way through here, up through here, up in into this uh, via up here. But look, right there, here's the break. There it is, right there. And that is what uh, stopped my circuit from working because there was no electrical connection between the input. This is my UART um, input here. The, the ground and the five volts and, and the transmit and receive come through here. And in the ground, the, the five volts and the transmit and receive went through to the rest of the circuit, but the, but the ground didn't because there's a huge break down here. Now, why they've done that, why they've decided to expand that um, copper around the pads and the vias, I have no idea. It's crazy. Anyway, they decided to do it and it screwed up my ground plane. Now, um, my ground uh, connection. Now, if these pads down the bottom here, if they actually connected through to ground on the other side and was routed off somebody else, somewhere else, I might not have noticed um, that you know a problem at all. It would have just worked. And unless I went through and actually visually inspected it, I wouldn't have known that there was this break here and there was this uh, large um, clearance around the pads. Uh, 
It's just crazy. It's something to watch out for. And um, yeah, I didn't do a thorough inspection of these boards before I assembled them. Just gave them a quick glance and they look pretty good. I think I was uh, carried away by the super low cost of these at $1.60 each, including tooling, which is incredible. I got carried away and, well, I didn't look at this. And there enough. But it's a major, major problem, which can cause real headaches and screw up your design completely. Even if these uh, pads down here were connected on the other side, there could have been a reason that I wanted the uh, current going through this way as well. And then you can get all sorts of um, subtle ground problems if only, you know, if the current's not going where you expect it on the board or it's being routed somewhere else. So definitely something to watch out for, uh, A, when you're laying out boards and B, when you're getting them manufactured like this. So there you have it. The problem was with these IT studio boards. Someone there decided to modify my Gerber files and actually expand the ground plane around those pads to the point where they went from an 8 thou uh, trace between there, which I was relying on, to nothing. A break. It's crazy. I, you know, I can understand maybe a thou or something like that, but to totally eat away an 8th hour trace going through there is just insane. God, unbelievable. So if you're going to get these boards from IT Studios, they're dirt cheap, great value for money, if you don't get problems like this. And they shouldn't. I'm going to have to ask them why on earth they're actually expanding their ground plane. I already had the 6th thou clearance they required. The spec is 6th thou trace width and 6th thou clearance between well, copper and one, any copper and any other copper. So the ground plane and a pad or a via or something like that. So it was already in place. They didn't have to expand the uh, power plane on there. I don't know why they've done it. And it screwed up my board and it was a pain in the ass. Ugh. Catch you next time.